We're going to move on now to begin the refinishing process on the wood. Uh, if you remember, we left this off after our water rinse, the stripping water rinse. So the next step is to light sand all of this. I'll probably use 220 and uh, a block and just get this nice and smooth. So I will bring you back and I'll show you how I sand. Well, in keeping with what we've been dealing with on this project, we've got some really deep scratches in the veneer here. Uh, so deep that I don't dare try to sand them out. I'll go through them. So what I'm going to do is take some more timber mate and fill these in, let it dry and sand them down. Just, uh, you know, like I said earlier, you're going to find these things as you move forward. What We'll set that aside to dry and then we'll sand it again. See if it works. Well, it'll work. I promise. And there's how the timber made filler fill those uh, those tears in the wood and the and the scratches. And I think some of it might have been a a bad aggressive sanding job at one point. I really just don't know. But you can see all those repairs that we had to affect so that we get a smooth finish here. And on this second piece, which is the flip-up lid, you can see we had that big tear right there that had to get filled in. As far as the rest of it, it's all sanded down. I suppose it's time for color. This is the back of the, uh, of the cradle, which has the original color on it. You can see it's, it's got a lot of red in it for a walnut. So I've got a red walnut stain. Matter of fact, that's it right there. I think we're going to put that on as a base coat on everything and then we'll work the color from there. And over here is the lid of the main tabletop. And as you know, walnuts and open grain wood, we may need to use grain filler here. If this veneer was thicker, I would probably just use the same timber made on it right now and then sand it down and then finish it along with the other pieces. But the modern veneer is very thin and I don't want to run the risk of sanding through or sanding off most of the veneer uh, using a water-based sanding or a water-based filler. So what I think I'm going to do is stain this. We'll put a couple of coats of seal on it, and then if we have to grain fill it, we'll grain fill it with an oil-based grain filler. And that way, when we're sanding off the remnants of that, we're sanding off the sanding sealer and not the veneer. So that's how that's my thought process on that. But let me get uh, ready to get start to stain some of this wood. Okay, let's stain the lid and see how it comes out. I think it came out pretty close. There's one of the drawers that we did. I think we're in good shape. Okay, and we'll make a decision about grain filling this as we move forward with the refinishing process. But I think we're going to be fine. Okay, and we'll make a decision about grain filling this as we move forward with the refinishing process. But I think we're going to be fine. And after two coats of sealer, sanding between coats, these pieces are all ready to be lacquer coated and finished up. But they're going to have to wait, and I'll show you why. And over here are all the pieces that constitute the top of the machine, the work surface of the machine. And as you remember, that lid and that main portion of the uh, work surface was re-veneered by us, and we were concerned about the fact of open grain. Let me show you what we've got. You can see just how open the grain on this walnut is. And we really can't get a good finish with the grain wide open like that. That's just going to continue to copy into the lacquer coat, and it's just not going to look good. Now, these pieces here are fairly well sealed up, but we've got a couple of little places where, our, where the damage, like right there, 
That's the best we could get out and the best we could fill it. So we're gonna we're gonna grain fill these too and see if maybe we can minimize some of this damage as well. But again, you remember that we we filled this and sanded it flat rather than try to sand it off because these grooves were so deep that we were afraid we were going to go right through the sandy wall. So that's the next step. We're going to grain fill all four of these pieces and as you know because this is oil based grain fill which which goes on over top of the seal coat it takes 24 hours to dry. So we're going to grain fill this and then it's got to stay overnight before we can move forward. Here's what I'm using. It's Mohawk's grain filler and medium walnut. I cut it with naphtha and a little bit of mineral spirits. And here's what we're working with. And it's about the consistency of, well, it's, it's thinner than peanut butter and thicker than milk. So, And what we're doing here is trying to force the solids into that open grain. I'm going against the grain, forcing them, the solids, which are very, very fine, down into the grain. And then we want to let it sit on there and start to harden up before we pull it off. So I'm going to bring you back when that's ready to come off, and in the meantime I'll coat the other pieces. And we're starting to tack up. So taking a scraper, you want to pull diagonally across the grain and pull off any of the excess that we can get off. So what we're doing here is both pulling off the excess and grinding in our product into the open grain. And hopefully you can see the dark color that's now in where the grain openings used to be. That's what we wanted to accomplish. Okay, let me get the rest of them done. Okay, the grain filler is on. We got to give it uh, overnight to dry, so that's going to be it for today. Uh, looking at these pieces, in my opinion, this was definitely the right thing to do. Yeah, it adds another full day to the project, but the benefits are going to far outweigh that uh, that extra bit of time. So that's going to be it for today. I'll bring you back tomorrow. We'll sand these off. Hopefully, we won't have to recoat them with more grain fill, and then we're going to get on to. Uh, finishing this wood. It just needs to get some lacquer sprayed on it and then we're just going to have to match the colors however they come out. I think we're going to be pretty close. I think we may have to put a little bit of brown on the on the case but it's not a big deal. So anyways, thanks for hanging out with me in the shop today and I will see you guys in the morning. Good morning. It's the next day. This lid is the only one that I haven't sanded. I got started early this morning. Hopefully you can see the difference when we get that uh, haze off of there of the grain filler. I'm using 150 to cut through it on a block. And this could be pretty dusty work, so be ready for it. Now remember, underneath the grain filler are two coats of sealer and then our color coat. We want to make sure we don't burn through our sealer and into our color if we can help it.
You get the idea, I'll bring you back. And here's our two pieces after we sanded down that grain fill. Let's get them sealed up. And here's our top with its first coat of sealer on it. And hopefully you can see how all that open grain has been filled. And here's our wood pieces with their first coat of sealer on them. Everything's drying. Of course, this one here has got to be flipped over and sprayed on the top too. Okay, I'd like to take just a few minutes to kind of review where we are with the refinishing of all the wood pieces so everybody's on the same page. We've got two coats of sealer on the drawers, the drawer cases, the garage. Uh, all of that stuff is just waiting to be lacquered. The color on it is good. I'm happy with it. The top assembly, as you remember, we re-veneered re this piece and the lid. They have two coats of sealer on them. Then they were grain filled and now they have two additional coats of sealer on them. The issue that we have is I think we need to darken up just a little bit the lid and the main work surface and I'm going to probably do that with some Van Dyke brown glaze which will be the next step. This is the glaze I use. It's by Mohawk. They call it heavy bodied glaze. It's in Van Dyke brown. But I cut it with some naphtha. I find that it uh, dries much quicker when uh, it's cut with some naphtha. What I'll do is just apply it with a foam brush and then you can adjust the amount of color that's on it by wiping it off or using a dry brush technique with a chip brush and I'll show you that now. I think that's going to get us pretty close. Okay, we're over on a big piece and I think you can see how much that color has been darkened down. Now the glaze is just starting to, uh, to dry so what I'm going to do is dry brush it out with the grain so it lays nice and flat. And I'm just using a chip brush here and I'm not trying to remove any color I just want this to be nice and flat and you want the whatever streaks you have from applying it to go directly with the grain. That way you won't see them. And if you have any little bristles that pop off of your brush like I just did, get rid of them. and then brush out the glaze and all will be well. And there's your drawer, there's one of the, the flip up trim piece and there's the tabletop. I think we got them pretty darn close. I'm real happy with that. Alright, time to start top coating all these. And here's all the pieces with their first coat of lacquer on them. I think we're in great shape. The colors are all consistent. The finish is nice, beautiful, and what you see there is the underside of the lid. This is not the side that we veneered, this is the side that we repaired. Remember this thing does this, so it's got to look nice on both sides. So that's got its first coat of lacquer. Still waiting a little while for that glaze to uh, dry a little bit more before I shoot over that. And I'm getting ready to uh, shoot the second coat of lacquer on all the pieces that we um, already have a coat on obviously and I just wanted to show you what I do between coats. I just take a piece of clean steel wool and I kind of just very gently rub the piece down between coats making sure it's nice and smooth that there's nothing that's stuck to it And then I take a clean microfiber and I just wipe it down. Get any dust off. And then it's ready to be sprayed. We 
just do that for every single piece. And everything's got its second coat of lacquer on it. And I think it looks great. There's the drawer front. That looks beautiful. Remember how busted these things were when we were working on them? There's the lid we've been working on all day and part of yesterday. Garage. That drop down piece, which actually has the nicest piece of veneer on it, I think. And then over here is our work table. Alright, I think that's going to do it for today. From our shop just outside Kennesaw here in North Georgia, best regards, thanks for watching. Take good care and remember, it's just wood, car, and some shiny stuff. And I'll bring you back for another episode where I'll show you how I do just a physical cleanup of the machine itself. And then the actual video where I put the machine back together and give it back to the customer is going to be filmed as it happens, but I'll only upload it after he and his wife get the machine back so the surprise is theirs. So anyways, thanks for watching. We'll see you next video. Bye.